Okay, there's a few things in the intro I'm gonna have to mention eventually, even though everyone already knows them, but I gotta mention them. So, here's one. Boom! There's Azula. Give me the map. There have been multiple sightings of the Avatar, but he is impossible to track down. How am I gonna find him, Uncle? Foolish Samurai Warrior! If you paid, like, turbo attention, at the end of Episode 2, Aang does vaguely point towards Kyoshi Island on the map when he mentions Surf and Koi Fish. Stop bugging her, Airhead. You need to give girls space when they do their sewing. Airhead's a pretty good insult, actually. Simple. Girls are better at fixing pants than guys, and guys are better at hunting and fighting and stuff like that. It's just the natural order of things. Sokka is pretty heavy-handedly sexist in the first few minutes of this episode. So much so that I'm really surprised that he can get over it so quickly later on. Still, though, they find a way for it to work, and it's one of my favorite parts of the episode. He looks pretty good out there. Are you kidding? The fish is doing all the work. He's right. Momo is like almost the size of Katara in this one shot. Wait, these aren't Aang's pants? Unless Aang puts on like weird yellow shorts over his pants. It's weird that they don't tie up Aang's arms, right? Now, check this out. There is nothing I can say about Foaming Mouth Guy that hasn't already been said. I am defeated. Did you hear the news? This is a really neat way of showing the passage of information. The background shifting towards more red as we get to the Fire Nation. The avatars on Kyoshi Island? Super tiny detail, the guy that's painting Kyoshi is the same guy that tries to paint Aang later. And oh look, there's even continuity for the worst bridge ever! This is the worst bridge ever constructed by man ever. Of all time. This looks more like modern art. If you listen closely, you can hear Sokka grumble a line here. Girls. When Sokka bends over here, you can actually see the stitching in his pants from earlier. Crazy to think that this fight is actually better than Zuko vs. Zhao. All of the background Kyoshi warriors have Jean syndrome in this first episode, but they get designs later. There she is, girls. Me in a past life. Okay, this one's kind of nitpicky, but the statue just got all dolled up. You've looked at it every day for your entire lives, right? I would be honored if you would teach me. Even if I'm a girl? I'm sorry if I insulted you earlier. I was wrong. This is a really humbling moment for Sokka. Even for Sokka, if you know what I mean. Sokka gets humbled a lot in this show, and this is just the first in a long line of moments. It really makes his character likable that he can get over such a prejudice so quickly. He saw he was wrong, and he admitted it. Everyone likes that. I think I'm starting to get it. The out of tune strings play during Sokka's movements to symbolize his amateurish nature. That works. Suki actually blushes for a split second here. I fell on purpose. This is the first use of Katara's water bending being purposefully useful. It's good to see her practicing in her off time. Suko. If you think about it, Katara shouldn't actually know Zuko's name here. He came to her village, but he didn't announce his name or anything, and he was already blasted off the ship by the time she got there. Alright, hold up, this seems like advanced level shit, right? Like this- I don't think Katara should be able to do this. Firebenders have landed on our shores. Girls, come quickly! Hey, I'm not a- Ah, oh, whatever. And that pretty much ties up Sokka's arc for the episode. I don't talk about music much, and I probably won't going forward, unless it's like really good. But this musical sting here is really cool. Jean, after an even shorter stint under the command of Zhao, was retransferred to Zuko's crew. He is now the bottom rung of Zuko's chain of command. Okay, Aang, let's go. Last time you fought Zuko with your staff, it wasn't even an issue. Just hold on to the staff and it's a free win. Oh, and there goes the staff. Zuko gets, like, utterly destroyed here. I'm surprised he even survived this. It's nice that Aang gets both sides of the coin in this episode. He gets praised like a god, and then he realizes the costs of being the Avatar in the current day. I treated you like a girl when I should have treated you like a warrior. I am a warrior. But I'm a girl, too. This is just a really nice moment. I don't really have anything to say about it, but I really like it. You can actually see Sokka wipe off his face paint in the background here. Okay, this is nice and all, and a very cool thing of Aang to do. 
But does it really earn the Avatar theme? Not as much as later moments do, I would say. So yeah, shorter one this time. You know, the, these first early episodes, there's not a lot to say about a lot of them. Like, yeah, the next two are going to be probably shorter too. Then the the Winter Solstice two part will probably be a little longer. But then, you know, there, there's a couple episodes in book one that... There's not a lot to say about them. I'm still going to point out all the background stuff I want to, but... Um, yeah, not all of these are going to be over 10 minutes, especially in book one. Uh, book two and book three probably going to be longer endeavors because there's going to be more callbacks and, um, you know, continuity between episodes to point out. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to say everything I need to say, and however long a video turns out to be, then that's what it is. All right, see you for King of Omashu.